Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome. So happy to have you here. Today, we are channeling your ancestors and finding out what important message your ancestors want to share with you at this time. Before we get into that, I do want to share with you that I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading and all you have to do to qualify is give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type Claiming Moon in the comment section below. I'll be announcing the winner on July 21st, 2024, during the next full moon, which is called the Claiming Moon. So be sure to claim any messages that resonate, as this is a general reading for all zodiacs. Some messages are very specific. If they resonate for you, great. Just know that if others don't resonate, they're meant for someone else. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So happy to have you here. You'll find a beautiful community of people seeking enlightenment, healers, visionaries, intuitives, very beautiful souls. All right, in today's reading, I am not going to reveal the card, but let me introduce the items for you. For the first reading, we have a seashell, and this is what it looks like. And for the second reading, we have a feather. And for the third reading, we have a small animal skull. Let your intuition guide you. Whichever item you're most drawn to is most likely the reading meant for you, although you're always welcome to listen to two or even all three of the readings as you may have additional messages from different ancestors or even from the same ancestor in different readings. You'll find a link to the readings in the description box below. Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You chose the seashell. And the card that you chose is Spirit Guides, Insight, Guidance, and Purpose. So the first thing that I meant to share with you is that one of your Spirit Guides is also an ancestor. And they are always sending you messages, signs, synchronicities for guidance. They love you very much, and you are very important to your bloodline. You are changing something in your DNA, in your bloodline, which heals not just yourself and not future generations, but also your ancestors across time and space. All right, let's begin with some oracle cards, which by the way, if you're ever interested in the oracle cards that I use, please know that I do list them in the description box below. And if I have a link to where you can find them and purchase them, I'll list that as well. If you hear any noises in the background, those are my little dogs. They love your energy. Butterfly. One of the ways that your ancestors are sending you signs and synchronicities is through insects, particularly butterflies. When you see a butterfly, this is one of your ancestors, and I feel this is um, maybe a passed on loved one, like maybe a grandparent or great grandparent, somebody that you may have even known in your lifetime. It's a more recent uh, relative. They love you dearly. It says transformation, joy, beauty, and transience. All right, let's get one more of these cards. Pile number one. 
I'm already feeling such a loving energy. Earthworm, clarity and rumination. What your ancestor wants you to know is that when you ruminate, they try to help shift you out of that rumination because rumination is, you know, just dwelling on something from the past. It could be something that happened 10 years ago, a year ago, or yesterday. Um, you know, it could be a conversation that you had that you replay in your mind. Why did I say this? Or why, what did they mean? Or why didn't I do that? Or I should have done this. Uh, they want you to know that it's a waste of your energy and they send you little signs and synchronicities to try to shift you out of that ruminating and try to bring you clarity. So what they want you to also know is that sometimes things that happen that are uncomfortable, that we would spend time ruminating on, uh, they happen to bring us clarity. So if there's something that you regret or something that you resent or you have unprocessed feelings about, understand that those feelings are telling you something to bring you guidance as to what to avoid and what to move towards. It is our discomfort that um, drives us towards the future, towards our desires. You know, if we live in a hot area, we're gonna want an air conditioner, that type of thing. Discomfort is what makes you crave something new, something improved, something better. And your ancestors telling me that you are their dream. There are things that they wanted that now you get to live already. There are things that they hoped for that you are the manifestation of. You are your ancestors' dreams. They're saying that very strongly, loudly, and clearly to me. They want you to know you are your ancestors' dreams. All right, let's get a couple of cards from this Oracle deck. Magic Guardian. Unlock the magic within. All right. You are a magical being and you have an ancestor coming through that practiced some type of shamanism, magic, some kind of energy work, working with elementals, with nature. They understood the power that objects like seashells um, held and they see you doing these same kinds of practices and they love that it is it's in your bones to do this and we see here somebody holding this magic guardian is holding something with incense so they're showing me some of you may have a seashell where you put sage or some other kind of plant or incense in to burn doing rituals and they love that and they want you to reflect on the qualities of the life that used to inhabit that shell and what it means and the water that it came from that supports it how the water's cleansing. They're also showing me some of you using a shell to hold water to do rituals with, setting it out under the moon. Wow, it feels so magical. In fact, they want me to put the shell that way, open, open to receive. Okay. Air Guardian, shift your perception. Yes, this goes back to the earthworm clarity and rumination. They are guiding you and helping you to shift your perception uh, whenever you focus on the negative aspects of a situation. They want you to see the benefits of these situations. So... 
For example, if we look at the checks and balances of nature, if we isolate one aspect of it, it may seem uh, unpleasant, like a wolf eating a deer. But if we look at the whole picture and we see that the wolves uh, keep the number of deer down so that they don't overgraze and deforest areas, uh, affect water systems because there aren't trees or vegetation to hold the banks in place. We see that there is something bigger than that little thing. And so they want you to ask that question is, what good can come from this when there's something that you're ruminating about instead of thinking I should have done this or I would have done that if I could have done this or if I would have done that or what did they mean by that just simply ask what good can come from this and they will send you a message. It may come in the form of a download, of a thought, of a feeling. It could be something that you read on a billboard, on the side of a bus, in media, but they will in some way, shape or form. They're telling me also through another person. Uh, it could be a stranger or somebody that you know, they'll say something and you'll just have this understanding, this aha moment and recognize how you can apply that same thought process to your situation. All right, let's get some tarot now. Let's see what other messages your ancestor has for you. Four of Swords. Again, we're back to the rumination. And I'm seeing it so much in this picture that I haven't seen before. So, I'm seeing this person behind the mirror who's trying to peek around and see who's looking in the mirror. And we see one figure standing here, but then we see this little person here. So there's something about your past, your childhood, that they want you to transform. They want you to stop ruminating on something that happened in the past. For many of you, it's from childhood. And instead, see the big picture of how this created a desire for you, just like the life experiences that your ancestors had, which made them dream of you made you, made them dream of what you are now. And if we look at her hands, look at the sand pouring out of her hands. It's this waste of time. You know, we think of like an hourglass having the sands of time. This waste of time and energy on ruminating, on wishing for a different past. They want you to know that like the butterfly, everything that you've gone through has been for a purpose to lead you to the point of getting your wings and being this magical person. That in order for you to realize your own magical gifts, you needed to have these experiences. Let's get some more tarot cards. Pile number one, eight of swords. So you can liberate yourself. You can liberate yourself from these thoughts, from these, these worries, this stress, this anxiety. Ace of Cups, they are sending you a gift. They're sending you something that will fulfill you.
They're sending you a dream, a hope, the beginning, a new beginning of something that is going to fill your cup so that your cup can run over. This is eternal fulfillment. What they're saying is that by liberating yourself from the past, from these worries, you will be, it's like the fountain of youth with your positivity you'll just it'll keep coming it's never ending it's overflowing judgment so we see here someone underwater looking through and you i never noticed that hand before Someone is pulling them out. Your ancestors are helping you to come out of this distorted view of things based on your past. When we're underwater and somebody's above the water, what they look like, what they sound like is distorted because there's two different environments. And you can think of this environment as the energy around you. And so by shifting your perspective, your perception, seeing things in a new light, seeing that the past led you to here, just as your ancestors' lives led to you coming into existence, you are their hope, you are their dream. They are right there on the other side, pulling you through to the life that you want. It's like you're going through, you're, you're going to go through this portal. This Ace of Cups is taking you through this portal. You're going to experience this huge shift leading you to your best life so that you can live your best life. It is very magical. They're showing me, you know, we have the magic guardian here and they're showing me this M here. So for some of you, your ancestor's name may have started with an M, but also they are saying that it's through magic. They want you to do rituals to release the past. Draw a picture of some past event and then draw a picture of yourself as a magical being because of that past event or events and then do some kind of ritual with it you can um, burn it and bury it the past event and then put the the present you the magic you the, that picture up somewhere but, and I'm hearing consecration, consecrate. They want you to consecrate your dream, what you want to manifest. They want you to start your day by thinking about what you want in your life and to look for evidence of that. Let's draw one more card. King of Staves, which would be King of Wands. So this is a spiritual transformation. This is doing, getting out of your head and doing things that are going to lead you to the life that you love. Moving from thoughts that are holding you back to actions that are moving you forward, whether you're male or female, becoming the king. I'm hearing critical criti criticism, critical, um, and we have the judgment and the king of staves. I'm hearing guilt, 
that some of you feel guilty about something from the past and they want you to know again that that is a waste of time and energy there's all of your experiences are neither good nor bad there are they are experiences what you decide to do with what you experience what you understand what you feel based on your experiences is what creates good judgment this is how we learn we do something it doesn't feel good and then we learn not to do that thing again right we continually increase our ability to judge situations to discern the right path and for some of you if there is some kind of legal situation that you may be encountering i want you to know with the ace of cups the judgment and the king of staves that things are going to work out in your favor so trust that i know that's for that's very specific and that's you know, for someone specific. So take what resonates. But they absolutely want you to know that everything that's happened is happened to create what you want. Without these past experiences, you wouldn't have the desire to have the life that you're moving towards. And I see you moving towards it. All right, I know I said this was the last card, but let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. The Empress. So the Empress is very magical, very creative, very, um, it's the birth of something. So we have the Ace of Cups and we have the Empress. You birthing something, you creating something something magical something beautiful you creating a new life is what i'm hearing a new life for yourself going through this portal what i see with these with the ace of cups this shape here this ripple in the water here is it's like you're going through a portal you're having this shift and it's going to change your vibration and it's you're you'll be living in a different dimension leveling up vibrationally that is beautiful pile number one so happy for you i want to just give you a close-up of her little crystal ball here so you can just check and see, what do you see inside that crystal ball? What new life are you creating? What is coming towards you? All right, I do wanna get one more card from this deck, pile number one. I love your ancestors. They care about you deeply and they want you to know that you deserve an amazing life. That's what you're here. That's why they had a hand in creating you because you are their dream. And what they dream about is you having a beautiful, amazing life not a life of suffering and guilt and shame and fear, anxiety. They want you to enjoy your life. Moon energy, surrender to the natural ebb and flow of life. If you're feeling confused, this fairy comes to calm emotions and reassure you that peace of mind is possible. And again, I am hearing that using doing rituals with the moon doing rituals doing magic is going to be very transformative and healing for you so making moon water cleansing yourself 
uh, finding something that's symbolic of your past, cleansing that with moon water, releasing the energy of the past, uh, energetic cleansing with sage, with Reiki, with cranial sacral therapy, all of these things. They want you to release anything that is of a lower vibration and to return to yourself, Retur return to restore your natural higher self, soul, your spirit to what it's meant to be, to its innocence. They want you to know that they love you so much and you mean so much to them. Pile number one, what a beautiful, powerful reading. How blessed you are to have your ancestor be your spirit guide. And for some of you, it is a grandparent or a great grandparent. If you would like more guidance, then remember you can always connect with me through my website. And if this message resonated, please give this video a thumbs up. Please claim your truth in the comments below. I have been loving reading all of the comments that people are leaving about what resonated, what they claim. It's so powerful. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose this lovely hawk feather. And hawks certainly are sacred to some cultures. And I'm already seeing somebody doing a smudging and energy clearing with this feather. So we'll see if that ends up being part of your message. Feeling a very sacred type of energy. Let's see what card you chose. Notice the signs. Investigate symbols and nature spirits. Yes. So some of you may be collecting feathers and your ancestors set them there for you. The nature spirits set them there for you. Your ancestors see you collecting these and other items from nature. And this is how they send you signs sometimes is through feathers. Let me just do that. Okay. Well, there you go. All right, let's get some oracle cards first and see how the feather and the signs play into your message. I'm, I'm really getting a very kind of Celtic or Norse type of vibe from this card. So we'll see. Pile number two. I do put the names of the cards that I use along with a link to where you can purchase them if that's something you're interested in. All right, we have the She-Wolf, Unleash the Wild Within. Yes, this feels like a, a, a more ancient ancestor. Someone from hundreds, maybe a thousand or more years back. And you feel very important to them. It's... They said they've been waiting for you to emerge. And look at the feathers. Wow. Some of you may feel very connected to hawk or owl. And shapeshifter, transform and unveil your gifts. And we do see an eagle here with wings, and we see a wolf here and a wolf here. So I'm also, in addition to birds, I'm hearing wolf, wolf clan. Your ancestor belonged to the wolf clan, and you very much are part of that clan. 
And like I said, they've been waiting for you to emerge. And there are certain sacred traits specific to your ancestor's clan that have presented in you. It's like maybe it was laying dormant in DNA in your parents, grandparents, but now in you, it has been activated. Wow, pile number two. This feels so powerful, sacred, magical. Let's get some more oracle cards and see what else your ancestors want you to know. What other message does pile number two's ancestors have for them at this time? All right, earthworm clarity rumination. This also came up in pile number one. So if you were drawn to that pile, there may be a message for you there. They want you to transform these ruminating thoughts and they want you to understand the clarity that past events bring to you. And bounty, balance. All right, so what they want you to know is where the energy goes or where the focus goes, the energy flows. So if you are focusing on unpleasant things from the past, then it's like you're nurturing that unpleasant feeling and that is what you will harvest. If you can focus on positive feelings, positive experiences, then though that you will manifest more of that, you will create more of that. This is how to balance your life. All right, let's get some tarot cards, pile number two. What other messages does pile number two's ancestors have for them at this time? All right, the Wheel of Fortune, a change. The wheel continues to turn. So don't focus on the past. The past is over. There is something new coming. A new energy is coming into your life. Renewal. A positive change is coming your way. Three of Cups. A celebration. How wonderful, pile number two. You are going to be celebrating something soon. There is something positive coming into your life that's going to give you cause to celebrate. Here we see a couple. So for some of you, it could be a marriage, whether it's yours or somebody close to you, but there is definitely some kind of celebration, some reason to celebrate. And they're telling me for you to look for things to celebrate. Look for things to celebrate rather than ruminate on the past that can't be changed. Death. Putting a debt, putting an end to the rumination. And look at this, another bird, an owl. I mentioned owls. There is your ancestor watching over you. Burying this rumination, this regret, this remorse, this resentment, anger, fear, whatever it is, judgment, putting it to rest no longer ruminating on the past. Queen of Cups. 
All right, I love that. First we had the Three of Cups, and now we have the Queen of Cups. This is divine love, loving yourself, nurturing yourself, being compassionate with yourself and others, opening yourself up to love by recognizing what you can celebrate in your life, what you can celebrate in others. And the five of staves, overcoming some kind of conflict. So using compassion to overcome some kind of conflict. Um, let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. Three of circles, which is like three of pentacles. And look at the bird in the clouds and a polar bear, but we see a body, uh, a person's body. It's like a shapeshifter. Shapeshifting, transforming some kind of difficult situation. This is what they want you to do. They're saying this is one of your gifts, that you have the gift to transform energies, transmute energies. So if there's some kind of conflict with others, some kind of conflict uh, energetically with life in, in certain situations, difficult situations, challenges, that you have this skill to negotiate and transmute, transform the situation. And how you do that is by letting go of the past, letting go of he said, she said, they meant this, they meant that. They want, they they are telling me that you are like a queen. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. You are, you have this presence, this magnanimous, this grace, this energy that is powerful that can completely transform a situation so that you can work together with others and with other energies. But if there is a particular situation going on in your life right now, this is a time to practice this. Ask your ancestors, your guides, to show you how to navigate the situation and to bring a resolution because that's who you are. You're able to shift things by being your authentic self and your authentic self is this queen of cups somebody who shows others grace if they make mistakes if they falter it doesn't mean if somebody hurts you that you have to make them your best friend and hang out with them all the time but you can show them grace and you can give them compassion and understand that they are doing the best that they can with the survival skills that they have. And by you modeling your best self, the best possible way to present the overall goals that everybody has in common in this situation, you will help other people to shape shift and move out of these lower vibrational energies into a, creating the bounty that they want to create. So not only are you a shapeshifter, but you're teaching others how to shapeshift. Not necessarily with a class, although some of you may write a book, um, but through modeling it, that energy, it's like contagious, infectious, in a good way so there's some kind of conflict or confrontation challenge and what you bring to the challenge is hey how can we work together for this common goal 
and celebrating each person's contribution to the effort, each person celebrating each person's talents, each person's skills by uplifting everyone involved you're modeling something that's going to change those other people. So not only are you a shapeshifter, but you shapeshift or you shift, transmute, change situations and other people. Wow. You are really special. Like I said, some of your ancestors, I'm hearing a thousand years. They have been waiting a thousand years for you to be born. Let's get one more card from this deck, pile number two. I'm, I just feel so impressed with you. Friendship. Yes, this makes perfect sense based on all the cards here. Fairies and humans alike need friends. Now is the time to seek out those who will support and encourage you on your journey to fulfill your dream. I love that. So we have three of cups, uh, you know, celebration. Three is that number. I've mentioned this before. Three is the magic number. It's like one person can do things on their own. Um, if one person wants something to happen, they can make it happen. If two people as a team work together to make something happen, it's a little bit easier than one person. But when you have three people, when you can unite three minds and three hearts for a common goal, it it's like magic. It manifests so much quicker. There's... And look, there's three in this card, three pentacles, three cups, right? And we see three people sitting, sitting here. There's something about three. You don't need to have a lot of friends, but there's also a message of balance between work and life. And look at this, look at the three here. There's definitely a message for some of you to look for something of threes. And you may be seeing 333, 333, um, something like that repeating. But there's definitely something about threes and things happening in threes. What I was about to say, too, is you don't have to have a 100 friends, right? You can have one or two close friends and you want that, there's a message here of work-life balance. All work and no play is not a balanced life. All right, I wanna to read to you what the guidebook says about this card. It is no coincidence that you have drawn this card today. Your spirit guides and past loved ones are trying to help you and want to get your attention. They will send a sign or message three times so as you pay attention make a note of any symbols or coincidences you might find three coins meet three people with the same name or be visited by three crows as you get to know what each sign means your spirit guides will continue to use them to get messages through you what did i tell you i told you there was something about three Look for three signs. Look for signs to be sent to you three times. Your the wheel of fortune, your life is changing. This card is a sign that the universe hears your wishes and prayers. Look for the signs the universe is sending to help you make a decision. Be honest about how you feel about a situation because you need to be 100% certain of what you are choosing. Do not feel pressured or rushed by anyone. Take your time to weigh up all the pros and cons. Once you have all the information, you will be able to make a strong and confident choice. Wow. Pile number two. I love that 
definitive concrete message from your ancestors. Look for things that happen in threes. Look for, you know, you find one feather and then the next day another feather and then the next day a third feather or you find three feathers together or three coins together or you see a message in media or in the side of the bus that says something like, um, yes, act now. And then you see those that same phrase somewhere else on Facebook or some other social media. Somebody says it to you or you overhear somebody say it. Something is going to come to you three times and that is meant for you. Wow. Pile number to how amazing love your ancestors you must be really super special because they have been waiting for you for a thousand years if you feel like you want more guidance remember you can always connect with me on my website if this resonated with you please give this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments what specifically resonated for you i am loving reading everybody's uh, claiming what they hear, what they want, confirming the message. So powerful. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You chose the little animal skull, which by the way is of course, not a, a whole skull, it's a partial. It's missing the, the lower jaw, but it is uh, from a skunk. And you also chose this card, Connect with Animals. Animal Spirit Guides Healing Past Pets. So let's see how this plays into the rest of your message. What I'm hearing already is that some of your ancestors will use animals or pets as a way to communicate with you, comfort you, bring you signs and synchronicities. Um, you may have a pet that's like a familiar. You can probably hear the, the pitter patter of mine now. <laughs> on cue um, but yeah let's get some oracle cards and see what other information your ancestors want to share with you at this time and I want to let you know that if you're ever interested in the cards that I used that I list them in the description box below and if I have a link to where you can purchase them that will be there too all right, you have night, be brave and honest. And I feel that you are already. I feel that you are a very brave and honest person. And this is how your ancestors see you. Air guardian, shift your perception. All right. So there's something going on in your life currently, a situation that your ancestors are helping you to broaden your view on. Let's get some more oracle cards and see if we can get some more clues. What does pile number three's ancestors want them to know at this time? Cauldron, creation, opportunity, and caring. So whatever the situation is, uh, they want you to view it as an opportunity to create an understanding, create a new way of doing something, create um, a solution that's unique. And Rosemary, remembrance, loyalty, and faithfulness. Definitely picking up again on um, a passed on pet for somebody, most likely a dog, although it could be a cat because I feel like cats can be very loyal to their owners. And your ancestor wants you to know that for some of you, you may still have a pet that uh, your ancestor embodies. Again, they are using your pet as a means to connect with you in a physical way, 
and to help you heal, to guide you, to bring you comfort. Let's draw some tarot cards and see what other information we can get from your ancestors, pile number three. What message does pile number three's ancestors have for them? Prince of Staves. This would be called the Wands in a different deck, most decks. In this deck, it's Staves. So staying curious, starting something new, a new passion, a new job, a new career, uh, learning something that supports your career or your passions, and being curious. Three of Swords, a difficult situation, saying goodbye to someone or something, a loss, all right, let's get some more information about that. Seven of Sacred Circles. Choices, options, making the right choice, understanding your choices. Seven of Cups. All right, you know, when I saw the Seven of Sacred Circles, I was thinking of the Seven of Cups, and then I got the Seven of Cups, which is everything I just described as the Seven of Sacred Circles. The Seven of Sacred Circles is actually fine-tuning your skills, your craftsmanship. So back to the Prince of Staves and upskilling something that you are passionate about, upskilling a passion, upskilling spiritual um, expressions. Let's get another card, pile number three. Three of Cups. All right, celebration, something to celebrate. Celebrating your choices. All right, let me take a moment to kind of take in all of these to combine to see what it is that your ancestors want me to share with you. All right, I'm hearing a spiritual warrior. I mean, we see the knight, right? Um, be brave and honest, which with the knight, we think of someone who's has integrity, somebody that's devoted, committed to a greater cause. And then we have the Prince of Staves underneath. And so I feel that there is this internal spiritual, I don't want to use the word battle, but that's what I'm hearing, a battle or struggle. And in the very next card, we see someone you know, a samurai dressed in armor with a sword going off to battle with the loved ones being left behind. So I feel that you are being asked again to shift your perception on something and to see the spiritual opportunity here to see an opportunity for some kind of creation some kinds of growth it's interesting that underneath the cauldron we have all of these ingredients that you would use to make something ingredients that you would use in this cauldron in this pot and each one of these ingredients being a sacred ingredient, a specific energy or vibration that contributes to the whole. And then when we look at the Seven of Cups, we see in each cup a different future, a different choice. And we see these two scrying, divining. And look at this. 
the couple in this cup looks like this couple here. Many times when we see couples, we think uh, it could be romance, a romantic relationship, and certainly that could be it. The Three of Cups is about celebration and it could be about, you know, a wedding. But I think for the majority of you, this is two aspects of yourself. You start out with this internal struggle, this internal battle, and your ancestors are coming in to bring harmony to help you make your choice right whatever it is that you choose to know that it is the right choice so that you can bring harmony within yourself this is also the same person here look at the robe that he's wearing really interesting All right, I want to read to you what the guidebook says about this card, the Air Guardian, shift your perception. Change the way you think and you will change your whole reality. The Air Guardian card represents the angels of the air element. Traditionally, air is all about thoughts, thinking, and everything that's happening in the mind. So these angels can help you to overcome any thoughts that have come back to haunt you from the past and to see the world more clearly. They're guiding you to change the way you think about certain situations as this could be standing between you and greatness. When this card arises, it's an opportunity to learn about your way of thinking. You're being guided to recognize that not all you see is exactly the way you see it. Sometimes the mind can play games and sometimes our perceptions can be wrong. If you're being challenged or feel that there's a lack of clarity and direction in your life at this moment, there's a good chance the way you're thinking or what you're focusing on has a lot to do with that reality. You're being guided to open your eyes and your mind. Go beyond any limitations you have set for yourself and recognize that the way you see the world is how you will experience the world. Opportunities are moving in your direction, but they will not only open up for you if you are ready to do the internal work to support, but they will only open up for you if you're ready to do the internal work to support them. And they're taking me back to this, this card right here. And Again, it's not about making the right choice or the wrong choice, but about making your choice right. That once you make that choice, trust that you made the right choice. Have loyalty in that choice, in that path. Have faith that you made the right choice. Don't second guess yourself. Um, if you do something and then you feel a wobble, don't second guess yourself. Stick to it. Shift your perception instead of changing roads. Change your mind. Shift your perception and see what it is that you can gain from whatever this experience is. I also want to read to you what the guidebook says about this card. All right. You have a natural connection with animals. They are drawn to your energy and trust you. You have a gift for communicating with and healing all kinds of animals, including fish and birds. You may have been thinking about working with animals, adopting a rescue animal, volunteering at an animal shelter, or looking after injured wildlife. If you already work with animals or have pets of your own, this card is confirmation that you are on the right track. Keep up the great work you are doing with animals. And another thing that I'm receiving, you know, withdrawing, you choosing the skunk skull and then drawing the rosemary uh, card is that some of you are working to help animals. And some of you are doing this through the form of restoring or preserving certain ecosystems, certain environments that animals need to thrive and survive. 
the rest of the guidebook goes on to say, this card may bring a message from a beloved pet that has passed away. Try to see or sense your beloved pet. You may feel heat or tingling on your body or feel your pet's presence around you. Your pet wants you to know it is happy, that it loves you very much and is still around you and your family. This may also be a sign that your animal spirit guides are trying to get in touch with you. Pay attention to any animals you are drawn to or that keep appearing for you as this may be a clue to who your animal spirit guide is. Your animal spirit guide will always be with you. It will give you physical warnings like an animal instinct when you need to pay attention or be alert. Try to connect with your animal spirit guide today. All right, I love that because I definitely got a message when drawing these cards that a past pet was coming through. And it is, it was... For some of you, it was sent to you during your lifetime while it was alive as your pet sent to you by your ancestors to be a living guardian that they could embody. Some of you still have a pet that your ancestor embodies at some times. Sometimes it'll seem like your pet is reading your mind. And that is your ancestor letting you know that they are there. And they also want you to know that they are still with you, guarding you, protecting you, guiding you, comforting you from the other side. And I love that it said, you know, notice physical sensations. So if you had a pet that maybe came and touched the back of your leg or brushed up on your leg, you may still feel that even if they passed. And that is them. This is confirmation that that is your pet coming through to comfort you, to let you know that you aren't alone. And it's not just your pet that's there, but it is your ancestors, your guides, and your angels. And they were in physical form first to give you these signs like brushing against your leg or Maybe you'll hear a sound in your house that you related to your pet when they were still living that you may still hear it now. And so they spent time for you to connect to certain signs that are connected to your senses, things that you feel, hear, um, things that you may even smell or see and they're still communicating with you through those signs even though they're on the other side now wow i wasn't expecting a pet to come through today and today's reading but that's definitely coming through so if you feel like your pet is with you and even though they've passed please put that in the comments let us know if you have been um, noticing signs and synchronicities from your ancestors, if you have been pursuing some way to help animals to, to maintain and preserve their environments, let us know. And um, remember, shift your perception on whatever choice it is that you made. Your ancestors' message is very clear that you are not making the wrong choice. Trust that you're making the right choice. Trust your animal instinct that you're making the right choice and then make that choice right. Stay committed to it, stay loyal to it, faithful to it, and make it right. Make that the right choice. Love the clear message from, me, from your ancestors, pile number three. Please give this video a thumbs up. If this resonated, let us know what resonated. I absolutely love reading the confirmation that you provide of the specific details that you hear and see in these messages. Amazing. Pile number three. I just feel the love of your pet and your ancestors.
you're definitely a guardian of the earth. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.